looked at, we have introduced a general scheme of humoral and cellular immunity. Let's introduce the big players, uh, the cellular players of the immune system. Uh, in the old days, we said there were two cells, the lymphocytes and the uh, macrophages. That's what we call histocytes. Today, there are still two cells, lymphocytes and macrophages. Lymphocytes, uh, the key cell, are the smaller cells, and they are the cells which the macrophages, or histiocytes, prevent the antigen to. That's why they're called ABCs, antigen preventing cells. Lymphocytes are the dumber cells, but they're great for making antibodies, and when they differentiate into plasma cells, which are modified B cells, modified B lymphocytes, they are nothing but big bags of uh, immunoglobulin. If the macrophages are very uh, spinous in their appearance, they can be given the generic or even specific name dendritic cells in a variety of locations in the skin. The dendritic cells are called lung hair cells. And last but not least, the natural killer cells are like Rodney Dangerfield's uh, football team. Actually, they got them trapped in the quarterback. They went after his family. By that, I mean the natural killer cells will go after other things. They don't wait for the macrophages to do the phagocytosis. These are differentiated lymphocytes which attack and destroy things directly. Let's take a look at some of these players on the field now. Uh, if you're looking at a peripheral smear with a classic bright stain, you'll see a nucleus there, which, by the way, is your 10 micron megastrip always round, always a minimal amount of cytoplasm. That's your classical small lymphocyte. Notice on the regular smear, you can't appreciate the little hairy or microvillous processes too much. But if you do scanning electron microscopy like you see here, this false color yellow lymphocytes have a lot of these little hairy projections. And on this uh, scanning electron microscopy, you can see nice little uh, villous hairy projections. Sometimes uh, the lymphocytes, for a variety of reasons, can be activated or what we call sometimes atypical or turned on in that the nucleus becomes uh, bigger and the cytoplasm becomes a little more prominent, but uh, it's still a lymphocyte because the nucleus maintains a round configuration and the cytoplasm is without granules. In uh, transmission electron microscopy, the lymphocytes, like you may remember plasma cells may have some uh, condensation of its chromatin peripherally and uh, still a minimal amount of somewhat uh, hairy cytoplasm. In uh, the eyes of uh, regular pathologists, uh, large groups of lymphocytes are always very, very blue because of the minimal cytoplasm. And if you occasionally see a cell which looks like there's a lot of cytoplasm and the nucleus is not dense, it's most likely a macrophage that's mixed in with the lymphocyte. And here's a bigger view in which you can see a macrophage here, here, and uh, maybe here. Most of the rest of these are lymphocytes, and I think you could appreciate the small nucleus right here and here. So basically, the immune uh, battlefield is an array of several different types of cells, not just lymphocytes. Let's give you the general rule now. Any round cell with rather dense staining cytoplasm and, I'm, I'm sorry, with dense staining nucleus. Okay, I've got a typo there. I don't like that, but I'll have to fix it on the fly. Any round cell with a rather dense staining nucleus and minimal cytoplasm is a lymphocyte until proven otherwise. Uh, and that's always true. Uh, it's probably the third most common type of cell in the body after a red cell and maybe a mucous cell. There's about a trillion of them. So the general rule is any cell you see scattered around, uh, not in the epithelium, but in the connective tissue, which has a round nucleus, low cytoplasm, they are lymphocytes. On the other hand, the macrophages, like we see here, uh, have abundant cytoplasm. They're abundantly granular. They're often uh, spinous in appearance hence the name dendritic cells. Uh, they are the big bag of the tigers. Here we see one almost with a brain reaching an appendage out to try to go after this bacteria here. And uh, 
they are commonly uh, called histiocytes as well. The terms are totally interchangeable. Let's look at them in regular tissue now. They all have really nice big granules. They um, have abundant cytoplasm. The nucleus is not dense like the surrounding lymphocytes. You often see them hanging out with it either uh, vesicular or ovoid, or one, some people call it potato-shaped. And remember, macrophages are exactly the same cells as monocytes. But when the cells are floating around in the blood pool, they're called monocytes. When they go into the tissue, that same cell has now earned the name macrophage. And uh, because I don't know how much time I have left, uh, I am maybe tempted to stop here unless Chris shows me quickly how many minutes I've been here. Let's look at macrophages and transmission, electron microscopy, and on scanning electron microscopy. Uh, they, like lymphocytes, have a lot of these little villus projections and free surface area. And of course, if you slice through them, the nucleus is often described as cerebrally thick. Not really round, not really lobular, but almost like cerebrum. It's kind of convoluted. And these are classed for macrophages by electron microscopy. Transmission on the left, scanning on the right. And the rule for macrophages is any cell mixed in with lymphocytes that has a larger, more open, less dense nucleus and less circular, but with more cytoplasm. And definitely anything with granules is a macrophage until proven otherwise. Most pigments in the body, especially pigments that are gobbled up, are gobbled up by macrophages. So a general rule is that hemosiderin, tattoos, uh, pancreatic pigment, these cells are all seen by virtue of being inside of macrophages. Here's uh, another major player. We differentiated two lymphocytes by their cells on the left. The fourth class of creatures are that they always have a round nucleus. They always have an oval cytoplasm. The nucleus is always off to one side. And the fourth feature is that the um, cytoplasm uh, between the flame or open end of the cell and the other side is clear. That's just a dilated uh, Golgi apparatus filled with antibodies. And often, like we saw with lymphocytes, the um, chromatin is kind of dispersed towards the periphery. We can't appreciate it here, but I can tell you if you see a cell with these four features, they can only be plasma cells. They can't be anything else. Uh, and sometimes if you see only two or three, they're probably plasma cells too. Um, here's a dendritic cell which is a uh, macrophage that has, or an antigen-presenting cell that has decided to have a nice army, A-R-M-Y, of granules and send out processors to fill the surface area, searching out those antigens and then presenting them for the immune pathway. Natural killer cells are lymphocytes that do the damage directly rather than through antibodies or through macrophages. And um, even though they're called NK cells, clearly derived from the lymphocyte line. And I think I'm going to stop here because it's definitely past the time. Thank you very much. Okay, I stopped abruptly. I had no idea what the time was. I don't think I have been over 10 minutes. Yeah, I, there may even be a timer on the way. I was looking around. Okay, there is a timer that you can, you can get. But the, I'm sure there are lots of little on-screen, oops, on-screen timers. Well, I think it's traffic. I think that we have a lot of medical exams today that uh, may be, so it probably needs a little more time. I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I may be taking a break too. Uh, let's stop the share screen now. Oh, did you stop it? Oh, you did press stop? Okay.